and welcome to math. This is our last big week on math stuff. And we are going to use this week to research some finance options. So you're going to go through the lesson, watch the videos, take notes, research your financial options, and write down your findings. And then in this Ed Puzzle, you're going to be entering all those findings. And of course, this is due Monday at 9 a.m. So we have three songs, the first two we've had before, but it's a good review. And then this last one is a new song. So we have some vocabulary on credit scores. So credit score is a number predicting how likely you are to pay bills completely and on time. It ranges from about 300 to 850 and anything above 700 is good. So this is all on your credit report and what the credit report does is it states your accounts, how much you owe, and if you've paid on time. And your credit score is adjusted depending on what they have on your credit report. And your um, parents and grandparents may have a checking account, but these days a lot of times they call it a debit account. And so when you have a deposit into your account, then that's money that's put into your account and it's added. If you have money taken out of the account, then it is subtracted. So here's an example problem. So make sure you've watched these two videos. And this one's kind of funny. Unfortunately, this is long and boring, but you do need to really know this. And so what do you do to make your credit score good or bad? And what kind of things are on a credit report? Then you're going to Google bank rate CD and find the best CD rate and enter that information. Keep in mind there's three parts that you need to enter into this question. Next is government bonds. So look up government bonds. Where do you get government bonds? How long do you have to wait for your money? And what's the current interest rate? And this is not a good source, so make sure you stay away from that one. Then you're gonna look up stocks, and you can do that just by Googling uh, whatever company. So you can look up Disney stock, okay? So you would put Disney here, the ticker symbol, the current cost, and then click on five years and kind of just tell me about how that looks to you. Is it going up? Is it going down? Is it staying about the same? And then you are going to predict how much you think it's going to cost in two weeks and how much you think it's going to cost in 10 years. So go ahead and do that for at least three companies. Then we have index funds and mutual funds. So mutual funds, you pay a professional to buy and sell stocks for you. And what happens there is the professional, you have to pay them 3% of the amount that's in your account for that. And so this video gives them a good example of that, but um, those are Canadian numbers. Here in the United States, you're gonna be paying about 3%. So go ahead and calculate what is 3% of 10,000? And then you have index funds, and index funds are done through a computer, so you don't have to pay somebody's salary, okay? And so go ahead and calculate 0.3% of $10,000. Then uh, make sure you've watched this video and taken good notes. You might need to go back and take a look at this particular number. But how often do mutual funds beat the index market? Then you're going to click on this and we're going to calculate not just $10,000 one time, but we're going to calculate it over the years. And this is a compound interest calculator and the formula is really complicated. So we just do use the internet for that. So let's take a look at how that works. All right. So here I am on the link and we're going to do fun type is other investments $10,000. We're going to do 10% rate of return. That's the average on the stock market. Six years, because that's how long you have until college. And then down here, we're going to do operating expenses of 3%. 
and go ahead and write down this number. Then on your own, on the link, change this 3% to 0.3% and calculate the difference between those two totals. That would be the difference in how much you would make with an index fund versus a mutual fund because you have to pay that person's salary versus just letting a computer do it. And the last, uh, last part we're gonna research is Reality Check Texas. It's super awesome. You are going to just Google Reality Check Texas and you're gonna click on Occupation cal Calculator. And if you don't want to live in Texas, it's no big deal. They don't have Round Rock on here. Uh, you can just choose Austin if you don't know what else to choose or if there's a special place you want to live, that's awesome. And then you're going to put in your career title. So I put in teacher and it does show middle school teachers. And what happens there is it tells me this is about how much a teacher makes. And I make a little less than that because I'm at a charter school, but that's all right. I like y'all that much. Um, how much I'm gonna probably pay in taxes? Ew, man. Then, how much I have left to spend after taxes? And it breaks it down per month. And so you're gonna get different numbers depending on what you wanna do for a living. And you're gonna start your reality check. And you're gonna go through all of these things and calculate what you want. You have to have water, you have to have electricity, you have to have internet, so it's gonna ask you all those things, okay? And what I want you to take a look at is what sacrifices did you have to make to spend less money um, than you will make from your job. And so this is called living within your means. So what does it mean to live within your means? So one of the uh, phrases that I like to remember is you can have anything you want, but not everything you want. And so while I would love to have a Tesla car and a really nice apartment and a house in the country and all these fancy vacations and really nice clothes, I can't afford everything, okay? But so now I'm sacrificing some things. Um, I have a used car, I don't spend a lot of money on clothes, uh, I color my own hair, all that kind of stuff, because my main thing that I want is I want to be able to travel. And so you're going to have to examine your priorities in life, and sometimes that's just a continuous kind of thing throughout life in general, on what you want, because you can't have everything, all right? So it has been an awesome unit. I hope you found a lot of good things that you will use in the future. And I'll see you in class.